What's going on people? Welcome to the channel. Thank you for clicking on the video as always. So in my previous video, I gave you guys a list of my favorite movies of all time. It was a top 80. So now I'm going through the process of rewatching these movies so I can review them for you and create a more updated, more recent list that I can go off of and see what changes on that list because you know, I think it'll be fun. So the first movie up to bat is Insidious, directed by James Wan. This movie came out in 2010. This was one of the first horror movies I ever watched. And one of the reasons I've loved it for so long is because it opened that door for me to watch more horror movies, but also watch more just mysterious movies or off kilter movies. You know, I wouldn't love as many A24 films as I do today if it wasn't for movies like Insidious. So that's why it's always held a, a strong place in my heart. And fast forwarding up to now, I rewatched it the other day and yeah not only does it still hold up but honestly i've fallen even more in love with this movie than i originally did so what happens in this movie well we have renee and josh who have three kids they have dalton foster and callie they've moved into a new house and in this new house it seems to be haunted renee is seeing ghosts and entities walking about the house and to make matters worse their son dalton falls into a coma-like state they take him to the hospital the doctors don't really know what to tell them because they're just like well we ran all the test he seems healthy we don't know why he's not waking up listen i don't have children but i'm sure anybody with children they probably feel a lot different watching movies where children are like in real danger like this because it just probably hits home for them a lot more than the rest of us but yeah what also helps this situation to hit home so much you know what also helps to make this situation feel terrifying before we even get to the demons and ghosts and things are the performances from patrick wilson and rose byrne i mean they absolutely ground this story patrick is playing a character that's very emotionally distant he's kind of drowning himself in his work as this situation is going on because he just doesn't really want to face what's going on. It seems like it's a little too tough for him. And as we learn about his past throughout the film, we realize why he may be acting this way. And a lot of this emotional weight is just falling on Rose Byrne's character. And she absolutely kills it in this role. I mean, she sells every scene where she needs to be terrified or just fucking stressed out. Three months go by without Dalton waking up. And the family is just being torn apart at this point and they don't know what else to do but try to move into a new house. That's the craziest part, man. They 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 do what you're supposed to do in the horror movies, but when they do that, they find out, oh, it's not the house. Like it, it doesn't matter what house we go to because it's not the house that's haunted. It's their son that's haunted. Yeah, I love the story here. You know what I mean? I just think before we get to the demons and the ghosts and things, I just think the setup for this plot is scary enough. So when you add on top of it, all the crazy shit that happens near the end, it just makes a complete horror package. You've got this more psychological, emotional side, and then you've got the more, you know, kind of over the top, crazy jump scare side. When it comes to those jump scares, I feel like James Wan executes them better than most filmmakers that I've seen attempt these kind of jump scares. Because when a lot of other filmmakers do it, it feels like they really love to have us scared by nothing like they like to have characters you know walking around the house peeking around the corners and then they look around one corner and a big noise plays but there's nothing there like there's nothing there or it's just a cat or it's just their friend you know something silly like that but in this film that doesn't happen man every time there's a loud noise or a jump scare there's Something scary there. Personally, I really appreciate this. And I love that James Wan and Lee Whannell, he's the writer of the film, they take the time to build these scenes up to make you feel uneasy without ruining the tension. You know what I'm saying? The jump scares are never so humongous that they completely deflate whatever tension has been building. They know how to keep the momentum of the horror going without showing all of their cards, but still giving you enough to give you some jolts and give you some creeps along the way so later in the film we get introduced to the character of elise and her two assistants specs and tucker and they're pretty much paranormal investigators they come by to you know basically look around the house and investigate what's going on with dalton there's a great scene where elise is looking up in the corner in dalton's room and she's basically telling specs what she sees and he's drawing it and renee is getting irritated because she's just 
looking at her whispering all this seemingly crazy shit. And she's like, yo, what is it? Like, what is up there? I don't see anything. And I thought that scene really had some great tension in it. There's a scene shortly after that where we get like a round table scene where Elise is wearing this really weird looking gas mask that she has on and it's connected to headphones that Specs has on. She's essentially using this to communicate to Specs what Dalton is saying. And I just thought the setup for this scene was genius. I just thought it was really creative, really unique. And that's what I really appreciate about this film the most. I just feel like a lot of the ideas are really unique. And even with the small budget that they had, they were able to really execute some effective scenes. They have some great practical effects in here, some great costume design and makeup, you know, some really cool camera tricks and camera angles. I feel like this movie just fires on all cylinders, not only in terms of being a ghost story or a haunted house story, but also just being a story about a family that's trying to make itself whole again. I feel like the performers come through to really bring it home. I feel like James Wan's direction and Lee Wanell's script really work together to pull this thing into being something compelling. Yeah, I loved this movie back then. I still love it today. If you're somebody that prefers films that are slower, more experimental, maybe they're a little bit more contemplative or complex, this may not be up your alley. This is pretty much just mainstream horror. There's a lot of jump scares. There's not a whole lot in terms of any kind of deep messages or deep themes or anything like that. But if you're looking for a wildly entertaining and creepy as hell, horror film with some great performances and great stories supporting it, then I think you should give this a shot if you haven't seen it. I mean, I think Insidious is fantastic. I'm going to give Insidious a light A minus and it's still one of my favorite films of all time. So it being the first film that we've looked at so far, it's going to get in that number one spot. Of course, it's going to end up going down the more movies we add, but yeah. There you go. So what do you think of Insidious? Have you seen it? Have you not seen it? What do you think about it? If you have, drop it in the comment section below. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and join me in the next video where we're gonna be reviewing Girls Trip. Until then, have a good one.